So in this video, we're going to cover how you basically move your units. And we'll talk a little bit about the round structure and turn structure too. So I guess, Matt, how do we move in Firefight? Uh, well, with tape measures, Rob. Okay, good. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, the game itself and the turn structure. Yeah. Because that will help uh, understand uh, how the units interact. Again, just like uh, Dead Zone, yeah. where we've, we've taken the idea, which works in rounds and turns. So within a round, we will take it in turns to move one of our squads each, yeah. and we'll, we'll take it in turns. So it's, in that case, it's alternating activation. Okay. So it's not, I move everything, shoot with everything, um, and then assault, um, and then you have your go. It's going to be much more dynamic than that. So I can react to basically what you're, so when you start wiping out my rats, I can try and get revenge, hopefully. Yeah. Or maybe just or die just, screaming. Or just, yeah. Or just cry. Okay. Yeah. So okay, that's good. Um and so uh so that's the so the anatomy of a turn. Now there are there are some uh, perhaps some orders or some ways of, of influencing that. So you might get a double activation or, okay. or things like that. But we can talk about talk about those things later. Just like again, just like uh, Dead Zone, uh when a unit uh activates yeah. Uh, on your turn, you, know, you can do up to two different short actions, right? Uh, which might be something like shoot or or hit the dirt, which we'll talk about, or just advance, or one long action, which might be something like a sprint, yeah. Or, or if you've got a reload weapon, it might take longer to to shoot, etc. Okay. Um, so that's exactly the same concept of dead zone. So again, that will be familiar. Um, now, one of the key principles of firefight is that we've based a lot around the leader model. So every uh, every unit in the game will have a designated leader model. And as we discussed yesterday, that's usually the one that's not wearing a helmet or is pointing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but it's usually one that's identified in a particular way, and it may have a different weapon, right? Uh, Etc. But all of your uh, a lot of your ranges and line of sight and everything is all taken from your leader model. Okay. So you nom so, so you basically nominate your leader. So for example, yes. here in my rats, in my crawlers or my stalkers, I've said this one pointing is the leader because yes. he's saying, let's go this way. So you nominate that and you might paint it differently or model it differently. Yes, to or show. as I say, it might have a different weapon okay. or, or do, and even different weapon options. Yeah. yeah. And the leader model is always the last one to be removed as well. So right. a, a unit will always have a leader. Okay. Um, so if it comes to, when it comes to movement, let's, let's for example, say it's my turn um, and I'm going to choose to uh, advance as a short action one of my, one of my squads. Yeah. So I'll pick this uh, enforcer squad here. It's a squad of five. My uh, leader's the guy that's looking quite casual at the at the front here. Now, when I when I move, uh, I move I move the entire unit, and it's going to be based on him, on okay. my leader. Now, I I can't sprint out of this terrain because uh, it's difficult terrain. You can't sprint through difficult terrain. Okay. A bit like game, a bit like Kings of War. You can't do um, a double move um, unless you're charging. Yep. Same here. So I'm going to advance out. Now, my, if we're looking at my uh, stat line, remember my guys had a, a 6, 12. Yeah. So on an advance, that's the 6. So I can go up to 6 inches. Now, it can be in any direction. And I move my leader. Um, he's going to come straight out this way. So I go 6 inches. Now, that's all I need to measure. I don't need to measure for these guys themselves. Okay. Yeah, individually. So that speeds the game up a bit. All I need to do is move back into what we call coherency. So for a squad this size... Uh, anything for t uh, 10 models or under, they all these guys have to be within three inches of him. Right. Um, and that can be in front of him, behind him, around him, wherever we want. So I'm going to put my guys like that. And then that's my first short action. At this point, I could shoot or, or yeah. anything else. Now, I can't advance again because you can't do the same action, short action twice. Okay. So now it would be my game. Now it would be, yes. Yeah. So, so say if, I'd, if I'd finished and I didn't want to do any more or I was going to shoot, I'd do that. And then these guys would then be activated. I'd mark them with an activated token. And then I'd hand over to you. Okay. It would be your turn. So let's now see if I were to say sprint. Yep. So he's saying I get my leader. So I'll move these rats here. So That's he's right. my leader. Actually, I'd quite like to get behind this cover. Yep. So I'd measure. So, yeah, it would be... Well, kind of out of that. So, yeah, so it's over your advance, but it's within yep. your sprint, so that's fine. So I literally just move him. Yep. He tucks himself behind there. And then I just grab these and just shove them all forward. Correct. All within uh, with the, within coherency of your leader. Now, you said about 10 models. Now, I've got this big terror in here. 
Does that change what happens when you've got more than 10 models? In a Once unit? you've got over 10 models, then your coherency goes up to six inches. Okay. So this is to allow big, if you've got, say, a, a big um, unit of plague zombies or something like yeah. that. Obviously, getting them all within three inches is going to start to get impossible if you've got 15, 20. Yeah. So it goes up to six inches over, over squad sizes of 10. Okay, so I'm well within, yeah, this guy is about four. But that's useful then, so it means I can spread them out a bit more. And yes. I've managed to place myself behind some cover there, hopefully. Yeah. So I'm going to get shot. But interestingly, of course, even though we're just using the leaders for movement, your model placement does matter for being in cover or, yeah. or range to a unit, etc. So... While, while at first glance you might think, well, what are the other models for? Actually, their placement does matter. Okay. But to speed things up, it's done on the leaders. Right. And I guess that's sort of similar to Dead Zone where you're using the grids. In this one, we can't have big grids, but actually saying, okay, well, they all move six or 12 with some exceptions. Actually, yes. that does make it a lot quicker because you can get used yeah. to that quite. So you're kind of saying, yeah, my unit's moving here with the leader and then the actual position of the models as they move around isn't isn't relevant because yeah. you know they're going to be giving each other covering fire and moving around, maybe running from bit to bit, but once once you're there, then the position then you position your models as you want ready for the next actions or to receive something. Okay. So could you as well, we've got some buildings on here. Can you obviously move into those or move on top of those? How does that work? So buildings, well, and transport vehicles work in uh, a similar way. So buildings, in some scenarios, you can enter them, some yeah. you can't. So typically you can, um, and they will have a capacity. Yeah. Um, so maybe capacity 10 or something like that, and that determines uh, the, the, the models can go in and, and the quantity. And normally on a larger building, uh, you probably split it into zones. So we'd have a zone here and maybe a roof zone as well. Yeah. And they're, and they're, and they're different things. Normally, a unit can enter from any point on the building, so you just have to advance or sprint to it. If your leader can get to it, then you can enter that building, okay. as long as it's not occupied already, of course. Um, and then you're, then you're inside. Uh, to get onto a roof zone, normally you would have to go into the uh, building in one turn, and the next turn you'd advance up yeah. into, the, into the other zone. My guys, or any other guys with um, who've got something like anti-grav, which okay. all, the, all of my enforcers do, because of course they do. Yeah, jump packs, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah can go directly onto the uh, roof zone at, at, at this level. Okay. Um, any higher than, than than that, and they have to start counting the vertical right. movement as well. Um, so, for example, if I move onto my, my commander and his peacekeeper bodyguard here to move to here, he has also got uh, an advance of six. He can, he can get there with his advance, yeah. and I can put them straight onto the roof zone if I wanted. Okay. And what's the benefit of being up on top of a roof? If you're in a building, you're uh, defensible, it's harder to, um, which improves your armour, yeah. and it's, uh, it's a bit harder to shift you out. Um, you can also shoot out from anywhere. Um, if you're on top, you still get the benefits of cover. You're not defensible, so it doesn't improve your armour. But you are, you do get benefit of height. Okay. So when you're looking at line of sight, or or you can di uh, disregard things that are three heights lower than you if it's if it's inter intervening. Yeah. Um, so if your guys were, you know, if my guys are down here and your guys are here, you'd get benefit of cover. But once I'm up here at, at height four, yeah, uh, over height one, I can ignore that. Okay. And, and shoot, shoot you, you wouldn't get the cover. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So they would obviously normally they would probably start shooting now, but we're going to yes. say they're going to stop there. Now earlier on you mentioned hit the dirt. There's another short action. So how, I mean, what does that do, I guess? I mean, that is literally that your guy is trying to make as much of the cover, uh, the immediate cover around them that, that, that they can. So for, yeah, as a short action, you can decide to hit the dirt. Yeah. Um, and unless you lose that marker while well, you've got it until the end of your, until the, your next activation, um, you count as being in cover. Okay. Um, so even if you aren't behind a hedge or something like that, my guys here could hit uh, could hit the dirt and they could be on the floor, you know, crouched down, yeah. hiding behind the, the, the minimal things that they find to gain cover in some way. So say these ones, so I've got my rats here. Obviously, this is pretty exposed over here, so I could actually move them six inches and get all the rest of them, shove them all up, and then hit the dirt. And then that means they're, they're in, in cover, cover. Yes. so it'll be harder for you to yes. hit them. But of course, you've sacrificed one of your actions to yeah. do that. Okay, yeah. cool. So I think that covers the basics of movement. Uh, and in the next video, we'll tell you how to shoot.